That's not just any fabric being stretched to the limit in the Nike lab. The rubber on this tortured shoe, not just any rubber. And the sole on this slider, not just any tough tread. Shoes like the Pegasus are put through this rigorous testing before they earn the Nike swoosh. A runner's staple for a quarter century, the Pegasus is also a considered shoe. Nike's word for green. The sole of this shoe is made with Nike grind, recycled rubber that's made quite literally from picking up scraps off the factory floor. And green rubber, another Nike invention that the company says uses 96% fewer toxins and removes 4,000 tons of toxic material every single year. We just simply don't compromise. We don't compromise on sustainability, but we're also not going to compromise on performance. From shoes to shirts, Nike's green extends to the 2010 World Cup. These soccer uniforms are polyester, spun from plastic bottles, eight bottles per shirt. The sexiest stars of soccer will wear them. I still almost can't believe it as we look at this, that this is made from fiber, made from plastic bottles in the landfill. Yeah, I think it's, a, it's amazing that we're able to find ways of turning waste into beautiful performance products. And I think uh, rather than having you know, up to 13 million bottles in a landfill, which could take 500 years to decompose. We're putting them on the backs of uh, players and the fans of the best sport they in the look, world. They look much nicer yeah, exactly, yeah. In, in the shirt. Beautiful. Yeah, and there's some amazing... Vice President Hannah Jones says being green is in the soul of the company. At Nike's headquarters in Oregon and facilities in Europe, wind power, solar, recycling, all used in Nike's buildings. A policy of dress casual and go for a run around the campus when you feel like it, helps create an atmosphere of balance. In fact, it makes you kind of wonder what's in the water they're drinking here. All this time and money on green technology, and you'll never see an Air Jordan marketed as a green shoe. Nope, just a performance shoe worn by a star. Nike insists that running a green business is no big deal. I think for us, we really want to walk before we talk. We're looking at every part of the business and saying, how can we make this greener? So to us, that's a huge journey. And, and with the, you know, we always say at Nike, there's no finish line. So we'd rather be um, a little bit quieter about it, but the commitment is deep and authentic, and, and it's part of our long-term growth strategy. In the late 1990s, criticism of Nike for using sweatshop labor and exploiting workers reached a crescendo. It fought back with aggressive public relations, and many analysts consider it firmly in a new era of positive PR and sustained growth. Grassroots projects like Reuse a Shoe entrench Nike in communities by collecting old shoes and turning them into sports surfaces like running tracks and playgrounds. It's more about doing it than waving the flag. They also know how hard it is to make the claim that you're really green. Uh, the de definition of that changes every day virtually, but, uh, but they've made a huge, huge effort in the last five years to really uh, take a leadership for the industry here. Nike talks about its closed loop business model as though it's the road paved with gold. Closed loop aims for zero waste starting with one product and completely reusing or recycling it to end up with a brand new one. It's really all about designing with fewer materials, designing for disassembly, designing to make it easy to recycle. So when we look at this, we really are talking about a closed loop. In the future, we don't want to have to continue to tap into the Earth's resources. Can you do it, really? Can you close the loop? Uh, we are trying. If anybody's going to get there, we will. Colleen McEdwards, CNN, Beaverton, Oregon.